And now, live from the studios of Freedoms Phoenix, Ernest Hancock. Welcome back to Declare Your Independence. But the man, they don't want you to be independent, do they? No, they don't. They them those. Who are they? Who are they, Ernie? Who are they? I don't know, not us. You know, there are those that just want to be left alone and those that just won't leave you alone. Imagine this. You're a smart person. You know, you got some skills. You know, you know how, you know, Grandma told, told you how to make mayonnaise. I mean, you know, you, you can do something. So wh- one of the things that was one of the most popular articles we ever had on Freedom's Phoenix was amazing. My wife didn't understand she, she was like, I go, we've been talking about, oh, we got chickens when they were small. A lot of our friends, you know, got chickens. A lot of the activists got a couple of chickens. Some have more than others. And we were just doing this chicken thing. Well, it was a skill that we were learning. And, you know, how, how productive can they be? How much does it cost to do them? How, how much care do they need? I mean, you know, the, the temperatures. And so, I mean, you know, what is it that we need to survive? You know, you want meat. I mean, you know, you, you, you probably better get rabbits, you know. But, I mean, it's just we're, we're learning things. So we go, all right, you know, it's a lot easier to eat an egg than it is, uh, you know, skin a chicken. So I'm, I'm like, I'm, I'm good with this egg thing. So we go, all right, um, let's go ahead and get the chickens. We did. And after a few months, you know, they, it, it probably took, I don't know, five, six months before they started laying. We got our first egg. My wife took a picture of it with a little digital camera of it sitting on a table in our backyard, a little patio table. And in the background, you could see the little coop, you know, and, and it had this this egg, you know, close up of an egg. Our first egg. Yay. And then we did, you know, made mayonnaise one time. And then we did, you know, just having some fun. She took that. And I said, you got to put that up. Everybody wants to see this. You know, we've been talking about it forever. Put it up. No, no, nobody cares. I go, no, seriously, do it. So she wrote an article. She had the picture of the egg in her backyard. And, uh, you know, so it's a monster egg. So she had uh, put that up on Freedom's Phoenix. Boom. Boom. I mean, it was, you know, one of the highest traffic articles that we've had. And and she's like, wow, I would even, and that got her inspired. So you see a lot of postings and stuff by Donna Lott. She'll get things over at Daily Paul. That's one of her favorite sites. So she's always put, pulling stuff over from dailypaul.com. And it was, uh, the reason was, is because I think a lot of people were interested in this and learning, you know, what we learned and, you know, better us than them, I guess, until it's time for them to do it. And if you have these skills and you start understanding that, oh, things are getting bad. Well, you know, you, you move out. Well, the bad guys know this too. And the proof is S510, because think about it. If you are able to produce food and you believe that Food is going to be a big commodity. I mean, this is, oh, man, I, I'd be wanting to eat. You know, the, the grocery shelves are empty, and dang it, I wish I had me some more beans. Well, Jim Rogers, you know, the uh, the billionaire biker, you know, he's been all over the world, and he's, he's saying, man, let me tell you who the rich uh, Ferrari drivers are going to be. It's going to be the farmers. It's going to be people that can make food, produce calories outside the system. These guys are the ones that's going to be ka-ching. Well, what did we see in just the last year? I mean, you know, prices are doubling, doubling. Just in the last few months, what, 40%, 60% on some commodities? I mean, this is and food commodities. I mean, this is getting stupid. So if you're able to produce enough food to sustain yourself, and you put a table at the front of your property out by the road and you get your own little farmer market and saying, you know, I have some extra cucumbers and pumpkins and corn and eggs and milk and, you know, whatever you are able to produce. And I know goat's milk is really popular. A lot of people want to have goat's milk. So people have goats. I have some friends that have a farm in um, Washington State up by the Canadian border. And one of their neighbors, thats he's constantly have more goat milk than he knows what to do with. So he kind of bars it and trades it and gets some whatever. And so that is what's going to be illegal because they love you because because you know, they want you to be safe. You know, we, you start whenever you you know that there's some legislation coming. You know they got something on the shelf that they're dusting off. They're going to be able to, you know, tyrannize us a little bit more. When they have the news just flood you with, oh, my goodness, we had a recall on ah, peanut butter. There was salmonella on some lettuce somewhere. So, you know, you, you, you have stuff outside. You're growing things. And it must be, 
I don't know, pristine sanitary, never going to have anybody ever get sick from anything, and if there is, we got a law. This is dangerous. I can tell you, you know, why I'm so concerned, and it will affect decisions that I make for the rest of my life if this 510 passes. Well, it looks like it will. I mean, it's passed the House and the Senate. Now it's going back for a reconciliation vote. You know, they're going blah, 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 blah. And then, and it still possibly could be stopped, but I, I wouldn't count on it. They want to stop you from producing your own food and any surplus that you have getting anything for it. You have to be in the system. Now, imagine you move to a small community. You set up that table out front and you think, ah, nobody's going to care. Right up until the local grocer, you know, the local dairy farmer, the local chicken guy, the local whatever says, hey, man, you know, I got a shiny badge to call to go sick on you. And that's exactly what's going to happen. They're going to say this guy must be put out of business. I have personal experience with this. When I had my pizza restaurant, my competitors were constantly calling the government because my children were there. He's got he's, he's got slave labor. He has children. He's, he's able to undercut us as a higher quality product at a lower price because his labor cop, what, whatever, you know, they rationalized in their head. It was certainly, you know, their, their livelihood. And they're not in free market competition. They're not about, you know, doing it themselves. Plus, you have the law is such that they can't have inexpensive labor. They have to pay enormous amount. It just prices people out of competition. I have four children. You know, they were working the dinner rush, you know, in the evenings, at least four or five nights a week, you know, right in the peak for like an hour and a half, two hours. You know, I, had, I didn't have a bunch of employees. I, it gave me an advantage, you know, like I was a, a Chinese buffet <laughs> or a farmer. But the law is if they're your kids or your grandchildren, then you're good. Yay. I got a loophole. Like Von Mises said, he goes, loophole, what is loophole? And I explained it to him, and he goes, oh, loophole's another word for freedom. Oh, okay, I get it. Well, so we had a little bit of freedom. Well, this is what's going to happen. You're going to be in competition with somebody that makes their livelihood on being in the system. I have to pay my tax. I have to get regular. I have to get inspected. I have to fill out my little forms. And this, you know, farmer market kind of little guy in the front yard out there has got the, you know, lemonade stands. I mean, they're actually going after lemonade stands. Why? Because it represents not just free market and capitalism and whatever and entrepreneurship and all that. It is a toehold for food, for being able to make money, for selling commodities that people want and need. Now, I have people that we were talking about this, and they go, well, what if you just traded for it? What if you just bartered? Or you say, you know what? I only take silver. Give me some old junk silver. Give me some pre-1964 silver coins, 90% silver. U.S. I will trade you this egg for one thin old dime. Will you do that? Will you be able to do it? I don't think so. I think that this entire mechanism is being set up to make sure that we are not able to have any kind of a cash flow from surplus food that those of us that are smart enough are starting to get our minds wrapped around just surviving this thing. Planting food. Are we going to save it here or we got to go somewhere else? That's what we'll talk about when we come back here on Declare Your Independence. Don't go away.